Hey there, it's John from Excel Campus, and in this video, I'm going to explain how to calculate running totals in Excel tables, and I'm also going to explain how to do this based on a condition using the sum if function. So this is a great question that came up from Paul, who's a member of our Elevate Excel training program. He's seen a lot of different ways to calculate running totals in tables, and just wondering which one is the best. So I'm going to present a uh, one possible solution here that I like to use. And within this scenario here, we have this amount column that we want to calculate a running total for. And we're going to do that in column F. And we're going to just use the good old sum function for this. So I'll start typing equal sum, we'll tab into that. And for our references here, I'm first going to actually select the header cell here in the amount column. So that's going to create this reference to the header cell and the header row for the amount column. And then I'm going to click right here in the formula. I'm just going to left click there so I can edit this. I'm going to type a uh, colon there. And then we're going to select the same cell in this row right here. So that'll create this reference here with this at symbol. That's just telling uh, the formula here that we're going to reference the amount uh, column and the just the cell here within the same row that the formula is in. So this is our entire formula here. And as we copy this down, we'll see that we're always going to reference the row here that the formula is in to create that running total. So I'll close the parentheses here, we'll hit enter, and our formula will automatically be copied down because we are using an Excel table. And we can see we get the running total here. So if we go look at a, a formula down here, I'll hit F2 to edit this formula. Again, we can see that we're referencing the uh, header row and then down to the uh, uh, row that this formula is in, uh, the amount column. One little drawback of this uh, solution is that it doesn't show the entire column here down to this row as being selected. These numbers are included in the formula, uh, but it, just the way we're referencing here, it doesn't show that those are selected even though they are included in the result. So that's just one little drawback. It's just a visual thing. It doesn't impact the calculation at all. It's just one good thing to be aware of. Another thing to be aware of is that we're not actually including this uh, amount here, the word amount, in the calculation because the header row will always contain text. So even if we were to change this to a number, let's say we called this 100 and renamed it, this header row is always going to contain text and therefore it's not going to be included, that text is not going to be included in our calculation here. So even though we have it referenced, it will not change the calculation if the header row contains a number. Of course, if it contains text, we don't have to worry about that. I'll hit Control Z to undo that. So that's a great way to uh, create a running total formula in an Excel table. Now you might be thinking, well, why don't I just do like the good old method? I'll type equal sum here, uh, tab into that, and then I could even start there in that amount column and select down here. I'll get a reference that looks like this. I want to anchor down or make this uh, first reference absolute and then uh, E2 will change as I copy the formula down. Why can't I use that? Well, the reason is, is that as you add or delete rows in your table or add rows to the bottom, this formula doesn't always automatically copy down. So it re requires or can require additional maintenance as your table changes. Uh, sometimes that reference to the bottom uh, won't copy down and you won't have the right result in the rows below or as you delete uh, rows, uh, things can happen. So ultimately you don't wanna use this for an Excel table. Uh, you want to use structured references. So there's a few different ways to go about it. I just find this to be the easiest and the simplest way uh, with a good old sum function. It's just one function, you reference the header row and then the row that the formula is in. So that's a running total. Now, if we wanna use a, or create a running total uh, based on a condition, like in this column here, we'll do a running total by region, we can use the same technique. So in this case, we're going to use a sum if, or you can use sum ifs if you have multiple conditions. But here we just wanna do a running total by region, our region column over here in column D. So for this, again, for the range, we're going to create that same reference here. So we're going to select the header row within the region column. This is the range we're going to evaluate. We're going to left click in there, type a colon, and then select this cell here within the current row. So that'll give us our range. For the criteria, we're just going to select this cell right here at region. 
uh, type another comma there. And then for the sum range, we're going to create the same thing. We're going to choose the header row in the amount column and then uh, click into that uh, colon. And then we'll select this cell right here at amount. And that's our formula. We can close the parentheses there. And again, what this is doing is it's just looking for that region, that criteria within this column over here and only summing up those numbers. So as we copy the formula down, I'll go ahead and hit enter. As we copy the formula down, that's exactly what's happening here. It's kind of hard to see in this view, but if we were to go filter this column for just, let's say the East region, hit OK. Now we can see that we have the running total again for this amount column by region. So if you do want to divide that up uh, by a, a region or some kind of condition or multiple conditions and create a running total, you can use this same technique and it's a relatively simple formula. The, creating the uh, references here is going to take a little bit of typing and clicking, but ultimately once you understand how it works, it's a relatively uh, simple formula. So I hope that helps. Of course, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment right below this video. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.